In this video, I'll be going to the slight risk for some severe weather across the force in the Texas here as we go in the overnight hours. We could see some pretty discreet and possibly even some severe storms here across the force of the Texas region here as we're seeing some pretty favorable conditions and as well talking about possibly two snowstorms here uh, within the same time frame here as we go at the end of this week here across one across the Rockies and one across the Northeast here and look at the threat here for some pretty wide fresh snowfall. But without further ado, let's get in the video. So here's a look. So here's a look now at the day one outlook here, and we do have a slight risk for severe weather across the portion of the south central and southwestern Texas here, including areas such as San Angelo, Del Rio, uh, Kerrville, Brownwood, and Stephenville, uh, or Stephenville, sorry, across the portion of Texas there, including around half a million people. And as well, we do have a pretty widespread margin of risk going all the way from the Texas border with Mexico up into portions of western Arkansas and as well, portions of the southeastern Oklahoma here. This margin of risk is including around 8.9 million people here, uh, just based just under 9 million people, including Dallas, Fort Worth, Arlington, Plano, and Garland. So we do have a very, very low threat for tornadoes. We won't really be seeing any supercells or surface-based storms. We're mainly be seeing really the, a small threat for winds or against. It's going to be mainly, though, the hail threat. We do have a 15% chance of uh, significant risk, and that's exactly why we do have a slight risk here. Again, that can be extremely severe, but the significant severe risk does include areas of uh, 538,000 people, including San Angelo, Del Rio, Eagles Pass, Kerrville, and Brownwood. So if you're in those areas, you could expect possibly some small, uh, maybe in some, uh, maybe I'd say just under um, quarter size tail, possibly in getting uh, maybe around inch, maybe even two inch size hail. It's possible. I don't see anything getting over two inch size hail for today. I mean, I, it, there is possibly some scatters that could bring in over two inches, but again, I really don't see that being really widespread. The widespread amount would be, I'd say, possibly half an inch to an inch and a half. It's probably going to be the widespread amount for the hail, but again, it really won't be a big event here. It's going to be meeting see some uh, pretty good hail size, and it, again, it is a 50% significant risk here. And yeah, that's what we have so far on the SPC day outlook. As we go to tomorrow, here, you're going to be seeing a little bit of a lower threat uh, for a marginal. And we go to day three here, seeing a very widespread general risk here. So not really any outbreaks, thankfully, for the next three days. So here's a look now at the uh, HRR 15-minute forecast. So we go uh, into around, this is about, let's see, 7 o'clock here, I believe, um, Central time. We're starting to see some pretty good storms here across the portion of the northern Mexico region. That is exactly where we're going to be watching out really for some pretty significant hail. And they kind of make their way across southwestern Texas. There where we have a hail threat. And it's going to continue as we go in the overnight hours here. We're going to pre see possibly some significant hail across again southwestern Texas here um, near San Angelo. And as we go later into tonight into tomorrow morning, here as well, we're going to be seeing some pretty scattered storms here across north central Texas. It's exactly why we do have a pretty nice or uh, pretty widespread margin risk. Again, going to watch out for some pretty good storms here in north central Texas and southern Oklahoma. You can be seeing a really small wind threat, maybe some slight hail, but again, really won't be anything crazy. And these scattered storms will continue uh, into now around the rush hour here tomorrow and we'll continue to see some scattered showers here as a result of the high amount of moisture here as well the really high cave values here as we now go uh to the actual cave values like i was just mentioning here we will be seeing some pretty high values specifically across the northern portion of mexico getting over four thousand jews per kilogram but on the texas side of things we'll be seeing uh anywhere from two thousand to possibly three thousand Jews per, per kilogram. This is kind of what we're seeing at the moment here. You can kind of see southwestern and south central Texas where we have a slight risk is where we see those higher values of possibly in the mid 2000s and lower 3000s. And as we go later into uh, in the overnight hours, again, those cape values would dramatically decrease here. It's exactly why these storms in these areas really won't be severe, possibly some really small hail. But again, there's really going to be just some scattered showers here. Nothing too crazy. Like I did say there will be some. Uh, just a slight severe weather risk here for a portion of Texas here. The big threat will be some hail. Let's go ahead and look at the supercell composite parameter. Again, very low chance for some supercells, but the best chance for extreme severe weather or some significant severe weather will be in the Mexico side of the uh, of this of this severe or the slight risk here. Again, we will have possibly up to 23, 24, even possibly 26 on the supercell composite for northern Mexico. As we go kind of leading right now, we're going to be seeing some pretty low numbers across Texas here, possibly two or fours. And again, right here, we will get to 10 to 11, but we're not going to be seeing any severe weather or any rain in the areas at that time. And if we go overnight, that risk will dramatically decrease, but we will start have, still have a small threat for some severe weather across portions of south central and southwestern Texas. Again, we will only get up possibly as high as eight on the super composite parameter. That's going to be, if anything, actually, we may actually get as high as maybe even 11 or 12 here, but that's going to be, like I said, mainly for the hail. Uh, actually, we may get a little bit higher, possibly, uh, not too far. Actually, this is, uh, I think, around midnight or 11 o'clock here. 
we may actually get to a 16 here across the portion of southwestern Texas. Um, maybe even possibly, I'd say 17.4 is going to be the highest valley. But again, small scatter, maybe just screw supercells are across this region here. Again, biggest threat will be the hail, not any tornado or extreme rotation. As we now go into the uh, now long range forecast, looking at these, these snowstorms that I was just mentioning here in the early intro. Our first one will be right now. We're going to be seeing some pretty good amount of snow there across southern Canada and the north central United States as a result of that very cold air coming between these two high pressures going to bring some really dramatically cold air getting to a portion of the central United States at, by the end of this week here. But right now, this cold front is kind of limited to across a portion of the Rockies. Here you have that high pressure bringing some really dry uh, but cold air across the Rockies. And then we have a low pressure right here in Canada that's, or right here in Minnesota that's going to bring that cold but moist and actually... A pretty wet atmosphere is going to bring some pretty good snow, but the snow really won't be extremely heavy, but it will actually last a, quite a long time, which is why we're going to be seeing such a good amount of accumulation because it's going to at least last up to possibly tomorrow night across portions of Minnesota and as well Montana with some scattered showers here and snow showers across the Rockies as a wave of moisture from the low pressure across Canada will move in the area. Like I did say, some scattered showers and possibly some scattered severe thunderstorms likely tomorrow across portions of Louisiana, some scattered storms there across Oklahoma. Early be watching out possibly for Wednesday here. This is going to be possibly something to keep a close eye on Wednesday here. Maybe some small severe weather. They keep a very, very close eye on that. But again, we do have a very wise for general risk. So just going to keep a very close eye on that. And then we'll be seeing some pretty good amount of snow there across portions of the Rockies here. And then, of course, as we, we're still going to be watching out for that small severe weather by Wednesday into possibly even Thursday across portions of the Dixie Alley. But this, this, these two snowstorms really won't start into, I'd say, possibly the end of the week here. By uh, I believe this is Friday morning. You know, this is this is this is Thursday evening here. This is Thursday at five o'clock. You're gonna see start seeing two snowstorms, one nor'easter and then one of the Rockies here. So we're gonna start seeing a nor'easter bringing some pretty uh, a lot of moisture here. That low pressure gonna be just off the coast here, and it's gonna bring a threat possibly for some snow a little bit more inland there outside the Appalachian Mountains there in Upper New Jersey. It's gonna be watching out for some decent amount of snow. We will have a, a high pressure bring some really cold air here between all these high pressure or these three high pressure we're seeing a ton of cold air across southern canada and eastern canada so it's going to bring the chance for some below freezing temperatures across those higher elevations across northeastern pennsylvania northwestern north central new jersey and central and southern uh, new york and as well up in the adirondacks and of course in the Rockies, we're going to be seeing obviously cold temperatures up into the single digits and even teens there and we're going to be seeing a pretty widespread snowstorm that's going to get a lot more widespread we actually may get a few snow showers possibly even some flurries possible in new york city there widespread snow across scranton essential and upstate new york portion of the western western connecticut west, western massachusetts but this is definitely be a more significant snowstorm right here to the west here across portions of the plains midwest and rockies and it brings in really heavy snow across northwestern kansas central and western nebraska northeastern colorado and some pretty scattered snow showers there up to the dakotas wyoming and montana that's gonna be a threat there for friday into saturday we could see some scattered snow showers there but Gonna be really snow for areas like North Platte, possibly some snow there near Denver, some snow there at Square near Pier, uh, even Bismarck may get some additional snow, Cheyenne, uh, Rapid City, and of course watching that one in the northeast, there's some pretty good snow possible. Then here in like Albany, Utica, Ithaca, uh, Pittsfield there, and maybe bring us a decent amount of showers there by Friday evening here, uh, around 8 o'clock here across portions of the areas like Hartford, Boston, uh, and even portion near the uh, higher elevation there. So we're really watching out for those areas here. How is this, how are these, how are these snows are possible here? So again, we're gonna be seeing a pretty large cold front here within the next few days here. So right now, let me actually look at this here. So this is gonna be again, right now, um, I'm going to be seeing really widespread cold front across the upper plains there, central United States and Rockies. And that's exactly why this first storm is possible, which we're seeing right now. And we just go later on here within the week here, getting all the way up to Thursday and Friday, which is when we're watching for the snowstorm across the northeast, we're using, again, that cold air. Uh, like I did say, widespread cold air across central Canada there. And eventually, by Friday, that cold air will make its way towards eastern Canada. It's going to kind of push that warm air out. And it's going to bring us some pretty favorable conditions, specifically for the western Midwest and portion of the Rockies for some significant snow. Going to be seeing some really cold temperatures up into the teens here. And if we actually look at the real-time temperatures real quick, let's go let's take a look at the real-time temperatures. Uh, that's actually, you can kind of see, we're going to be seeing some probably up into the 30s there, portion of the 20s there, specifically even some scattered areas of teens across the Rockies. 
and then getting into the uh, the 30s and as well even upper 20s across portions of their of the northeast here so some pretty good temperatures in those areas let's go real time snowfall here for the next 10 days across these areas so look in the west very watchful amount of snow across specifically the midwest plains and of course the rockies and this is actually the snowiest month i believe for these areas i believe march slash april is going to be the snowiest month for these areas like uh, kind of right in the western midwest there and like kind of the foothills the rockies so we're using a lot of areas that can possibly get over foot there we're talking uh, snow uh, coming into northwestern uh, Montana, some widespread snow again in the higher elevations there across central uh, Colorado, and some really widespread amounts of snow there up to a foot or more across those higher elevations there in western South Dakota, north central, and as well even portions of western Wyoming, uh, far northern Utah, portions as well of eastern Idaho, southern um, and southern Montana. You can get some pretty good accumulations. Uh, accumulating snow there as well across portions of the Dakotas there can possibly get maybe half an inch near pier possibly up to five uh, inches there across here's like Bismarck was possibly even a foot to the northern portion of the state there half foot possibly for here's at like Grand Forks possibly over a foot there near a foot maybe for Billings Montana anywhere from five to possibly even nine inches the snowfall some decent snow there the Colorado Springs region possibly can make it uh, to one to three inches and even some pretty good snow getting all the way into Nebraska here even a chance very small chance for some killing very small cumulian snow it may be a trace there across south and southeast in nebraska and even some accumulating snow for the panhandle of texas so so this is a lot to, to say here but just in general see you can see the the hot spot will be portion at the high rocky elevations there and kind of the kind of like a little character there but it's going to be actually the main rockies will be right here obviously the main rockies and then some pretty good snow there at this main rocky snowstorm like gonna be right here basically towards the northeast here including here, like the dakotas and the plains here and then that's what will go towards the northeast here some really good snow possibly across portions of uh south central new york northeastern pennsylvania and north Western and Central and New Jersey is kind of we're going to be really watching out for the main snow with this snowstorm here on Thursday and Friday, as well as some scattered areas of possibly overfoot again across the portion of New England. So pretty significant snow though, possibly again. And again, a very widespread area of overfoot here, mainly uh, for the areas that is in South Central New York, we may actually get up to 22 inches of snow there, 22.4. So two feet of snow is actually possible within the nor'easter. Looking at uh, the Poconos getting one to one to three inches there. Areas near Scranton may get very similar totals to two, possibly two to three inches. But right far northeastern Pennsylvania, there we were possibly looking at ten to fourteen inches, maybe sixteen inches of snowfall. Northwestern New Jersey, um, you guys may get anywhere from five to nine inches of snowfall there. Utica, Ithaca, possibly again over a foot or possibly over half a foot. Uh, obviously, in the upper Adirondacks and upstate New York, we'll be looking at over an, uh, over a foot there. As well, two little areas here are across specifically western Massachusetts and south central and central Vermont. And of course, they're across central Massachusetts, north central, for, uh, New north central New Hampshire, and portions of south western New Hampshire. There's going to be some very scattered areas of over a uh, foot there. So it's going to be very scattered across specifically, specifically scattered areas, no really pattern. Obviously, the pattern here for the, the higher elevations, but as it gradually makes its way towards the east here, that colder will become a lot more widespread, so some snow is even possible. I mean, Boston may get maybe two to four inches there. Definitely a pro probability there. Worcester may get maybe eight to ten inches. Uh, of course, areas like Berlin may get one to two inches there. Areas like um, Concord may get just under an inch or so, but really watching out again for some decent snow there. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm not sure if I'm going to post tomorrow. It all depends on when I get home from tennis, but I'll see you guys later.